Let's look at the projectile that is launched at the angle above the horizontal and landing at the same height as the initial height, like this ball. A projectile shot at an angle would have a trajectory like this. If we shine light from above, the shadow down here would travel at a constant velocity covering the same distance every second. If we shine light from this side and look at the shadow on the screen over here, we would see the shadow acting like a falling object shot straight up, reaching a maximum height and then coming back down. Let's try this problem. A ball is kicked at a speed of 20 meters per second at a 37 degree angle above the horizontal on a level field. What maximum height can this ball reach? What is the ball's velocity at that maximum height? How long does it take for the ball to land? And how far away does the ball land? And at what speed does the ball land? Same as before, I'm making this chart to separate the horizontal and the vertical sides. Now, let's list the variables. The initial velocity is 20 meters per second. Do you think that should go to the horizontal side or the vertical side? Actually, neither. This slanted 20 meters per second velocity sort of goes up and sort of goes to the right. So it has a horizontal and a vertical component. That's what we call them, components. To find these two components, I make a rectangle like this. So the length of the 20 meters per second vector is exactly the diagonal of the rectangle. Not like this, nor like that. It's very important that you draw this correctly, and you will see this over and over again in this course. In this rectangle, this side is the horizontal component of the initial velocity, and this side here is the vertical component of the initial velocity. To find these components, we need to use some trig functions. Just in case if you are not familiar with trig functions, I will write things down here. In a right triangle for this angle theta, this longest side is called the hypotenuse. The side is opposite to the angle, so this is called the opposite side. This one adjacent to the angle, adjacent side. And the sine theta equals to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine theta equals to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tan theta equals to the opposite side over the adjacent side. In this course, they are pretty much all you need for this trick part. And that's your so ka to -a. Now, we want to find the horizontal component of the initial velocity. B O X. In this right triangle, you can see that the V O X is the adjacent side. The adjacent side is related to the cosine theta. And from here, you can see that the adjacent side equals the hypotenuse times the cosine theta. And for this right triangle, the hypotenuse is the 20 meters per second. And the angle, of course, is the 37 degrees. So this equals to 20 times cosine 37 degrees, which gives you about 16. That's why you have to draw your rectangle this way, with the slanted velocity fitting in the diagonal exactly. If you get an answer that is 15.3, that's because your calculator is in radian mode you will have to change it to degree mode because the angle given here is in degrees. The vertical component is VOY. It is the same as the opposite side, which equals to hypotenuse times the sine theta. 
and the hypotenuse is 20 and the angle is 37 degrees so this gives you 12 so we write in here the initial velocity's x component is 16 the initial velocity's vertical component is 12 and of course we also know that the acceleration on the vertical side is uh, negative g which is uh, I'm going to round it to 10, negative 10. This tells you that when you look down from above, you see the horizontal motion. The object travels to the right at a constant 16 meters per second the entire time. When you look from the side, you see the vertical motion, which is exactly the same as a falling object shot upward at 12 meters per second going up to the maximum height and then falling back to its initial position. The upward trip and the downward trip are symmetric. Part A, we're looking for the maximum height. So we're looking for delta y. For the vertical motion, the maximum height is the turning point. So the velocity's y component is zero at the maximum height. There is no time involved, so this equation can be convenient. The v squared equals vo squared plus 2a delta y. The final velocity is 0. The initial is 12 plus 2a delta y. So this will be 0 equals 144 minus 20 times delta y. You can move this over, 20 delta y equals to 144, and that gives you delta y if you divide by 20 on both sides, 7.2 meters. And that is the answer for part A. For part B, we're looking for the velocity at the maximum height. The velocity at the maximum height we found was a zero because it's a turning point for the vertical direction. The, the velocity in the horizontal direction is still the same 16 because it's constant velocity motion. The velocity in the horizontal direction never changes. So we want the velocity. For the velocity at the maximum height, you can answer by components. The velocity's x component is 16 meters per second while the velocity's y component is zero. Or you can answer by the total velocity. If you combine these two, you only have x component. So your total velocity will be 16 meters per second to the right. I didn't ask you to find the speed, but if you are asked to find the speed, the speed would be the magnitude of the total velocity, which is 16 meters per second. So you can answer these two ways for velocity. For part C, we're looking for the time it takes to land. For the vertical motion, if the ball goes up and then back down to the same height, we can use the delta y equals to zero to find the time all the way to landing. Or since the upward trip and the downward trip, they are symmetric, we can also find the time to maximum height first and then double it to get the total time. So I'll find the time to maximum height first. We already know four things. So any equation involving time will work. I will use this one. V equals to VO plus AT. Final velocity is 0, initial is 12. So this is, uh, I can move this one over. 10t equals to 12, so t equals to 1.2 seconds. But this is only the time to maximum height. So if I want the total time, I'll have to multiply that by 2 and get 2.4 seconds. And that's the answer for part C. For part D, we want how far away the ball lands. How far away it lands, that means we want the delta x. The only equation we will use for the horizontal side is uh, delta x equals to the v times t. There are th three different velocities we have. 
20, 16, and 12. Which, ve which velocity should we use here? Of course, we use the velocity on the horizontal side, so it is 16. The time is something we can get from the vertical side because the time is the same for the both sides. We found the total time to land is 2.4 seconds, so that's the time we use. If you use 1.2, you only get the delta x to the middle, the maximum height. So this gives you 38.4 meters. And that's the answer for part D. For part E, we want the speed at which the projectile lands. So part E, we can find the first find the velocity. The velocity has two components. The x component never changes, so it's 16. The y component, since the upward trip and the downward trip, they are symmetric. That means that if uh, the ball goes up at 12 meters per second at the beginning, at the very end, when it bit right before it lands, it has a downward 12 meters per second. So the y velocity would be negative 12, which means the total velocity would be 16 to the right and uh, 12 going down. The total velocity would be the diagonal of this rectangle. When you break a vector into its two components, you would draw a rectangle like this to find the two components. And in this case, we have the two components and we want to find the total slanted velocity. So again, you would make a rectangle. The diagonal would be the sum. So this is the total velocity. And if you want to find the magnitude of the total velocity, you can use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So this will be the square root of uh, 12 squared plus 16 squared, which happens to be 20. Because uh, remember the upward trip and downward trips are symmetric. That means uh, if it starts out at 37 degree angles, it will end at the same speed but uh, 37 degrees below the horizontal. And the magnitude of the velocity is the speed. So this 20 meters per second is the speed. And that's the answer for part E. One last thing I want to talk about is uh, a right triangle with 37, 53 degrees. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle which means uh, your sine, cosine, tan will have simpler numbers to work with. The sine 37 degrees is 3 fifths. The cosine is 4 fifths. So you should expect to see 37 degrees and 53 degrees a lot in this course. And when you see those angles, that means the problem intends for you to have simpler numbers to work with. So go ahead and round the G to 10.